morning. Welcome to Jesus the Rock Church. We're going to continue our Bible study in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 9. Uh, we just want to praise you. It's a beautiful day. It's all melted now. No more ice. Yahoo! We're heading into spring. We just want to praise God for this beautiful day. It's a little overcast. Uh, the weather is forecasting some rain coming in. Hopefully not in the middle of this Bible study. Dear Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for this time that we can join together as brothers and sisters in Christ to go over your word. Bless this session, Lord God, as we dig into your word, Lord God. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to live by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before I start chapter 9, I just want to uh, make a little clarification on chapter 8. When I said Saul was committed to the Word of God, Saul at this point is committed to the Law of Moses, uh, his Word of God that he believed in. He was committed to persecuting the Christians. So I just want to clarify that right off the top before we start chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 1. Hope you're ready. I'm ready. You got your Bibles open? Let's dig in. Let's get a wonderful meal of the Word of God. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughtering, slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, verse 2, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So he wanted a letter of permission to go into these towns, and capture these people called Christians, the way of Christ, to bring persecution against them. So wherever he went, he had a letter to do whatever he felt like and arrest them and bring them to justice for transgressing the law of Moses. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. Hallelujah. Now, through all this Bible study, I'm telling you, God is a living God. God sees everything that's going on. God is seeing Saul, what he's doing to God's children, living by the truth, living by the word, in, uh, getting baptized in water, getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that is bringing an uproar, because this is a new thing that's happening, and men of the cloth in the synagogues don't get it. So all of a sudden, a bright light from heaven shone around about him. Verse 4. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutes thou me? Verse 5. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Okay, verse 5. A few very important things that are happening here. <clears throat> All right. Moses, when he saw the burning bush, and the voice that came out of the burning bush said, Go into Egypt and tell them to free my children. Let my children go. Moses goes, who do I tell him that sent me? And the voice from the bush says, I am. Here in chapter 9, verse 5, who art thou, Lord? This is Saul. He's already calling him Lord, so his heart already has a feeling that he knows exactly what's happening. Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. So let's pull that out of Scripture. I am Jesus, whom thou persecutes. Okay? Very important. Saul knows he's persecuting men and women and children that are believing in this way of getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. We've read that. But now he's here and you're persecuting me, the Lord Jesus. 
verse 6, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Brothers and sisters, this is an awesome thing. This is the point I tell everyone. Each and every one of us needs to go before the Lord and ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? And brothers and sisters, this is why I'm doing this Bible study on the book of Acts, putting on video and putting on Facebook, putting it out so you can hear the truth. Lord, what do you want me to do? We'll continue verse 6. And the Lord said unto him, Arise. He wants all of us to arise. He wants you there sitting at home. Arise in the Lord and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Okay, so he's given a little piece of revelation knowledge. Arise, Saul, go into the city and then I will tell you more. Okay, we don't get the whole entire picture yet. We have to wait. we got a little bit. Just do this. We got to learn how to crawl before we walk. Okay? Verse 7. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless. Now imagine you're witnessing your boss going through this. I'm sure you would be speechless too. You don't have a clue what to make of it. And they're hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So, all the men, all the soldiers from the church that are with Saul, saw all this happening, a bright light showing. Then they hear a voice, very clear, but there is no one around them. So they are hearing the voice of the Lord, Jesus Christ, talking to Saul. Go into the city, and then I'll tell you what should be done. They are hearing this, they are seeing this, but there is no one else standing around them. Imagine if that was you today. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him, him into Damascus. Okay? He's blind. It was sun, the light was so bright that he couldn't see. But we just read there was all kinds of men around him. They saw what happened. Their eyes were not touched. Verse 9, And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Okay? Saul in his wisdom, Saul through his training, the law of Moses, knew about fasting. He had this experience that he knew it was Jesus. Now he already knows. Jesus is crucified. Jesus is dead. He asks, Who art thou, Lord? He says, It is, I am Jesus. So now, he, for three days, he didn't eat nor drink. Saul went on a fast. A fast of praying and seeking the Lord. He fasted because he was blind. Verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus, named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. Now you have a disciple of the Lord. Now he can hear Jesus. Okay? We are always talking about a living God. Jesus Christ is alive. He's not dead. And if he's alive, he can talk. And if he talks, that means you and I can hear him. Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. So anytime Jesus calls your name, very smart. Here I am, Lord, please speak. Your servant is listening. Verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, hallelujah, and has seen in a vision... So not only did he hear Jesus when he was blinded, now he's receiving a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now we get of laying on of hands and someone going to be receiving their sight who was blind. 
Verse 13, And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many of by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. 14. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Ananias is a little nervous. He knows when the Lord told him, go into the house and look for this man called Saul of Tarsus to go and lay hands on him, that he saw a vision that he was going to receive his sight. Ananias is asking for a little confirmation, saying, Lord, I'm a little nervous. Do you know what this guy's going to do to me if I go into his house? Verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he has a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. Hallelujah, that's us. And kings and the children of Israel. So the Lord, in his great compassion and great mercy, understands the little bit of fear that Ananias has, because he's like, you know what this guy can do? He says, go. Don't worry about it. He is a chosen vessel. Are you a chosen vessel? Are you a special chosen vessel? I say you are. There is something Jesus wants you to do. Could be great, could be small. It doesn't matter. You are a chosen vessel of the Lord. Verse 7, And the men which journeyed and stood speechless. Whoops, I'm sorry. I skipped it. Verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. 16, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So Jesus is going to show him. Absolutely. And he always keeps his word. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me. So Ananias is uh, confirming that in the vision you saw me coming to you, it is also the same Jesus that has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So he's laying hands on him. Not only is he going to receive his sight, he's going to get the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which we read in chapter 1 and 2, is the evidence is speaking in other tongues. See? So you got to know what Scripture says when it's to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. This is Saul. Verse 18, And immediately... There fell from his eyes as it had been scaled, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Now remember, he didn't eat for three days, he didn't drink for three days. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. Hallelujah! Saul gets it. He had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus blinded him. Jesus gave him a vision. Jesus uh, now has infilled him with the Holy Spirit. He's baptized, speaking in other tongues, and now immediately he's out preaching the good news that Jesus is the Son of God. Talk about full 180. All this happened in three days. <coughs> 21. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them? which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. But Saul increased the more in strength. Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. Verse 22, Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwell at Damascus, proving 
that this is the very Christ. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Brothers and sisters, this is right out of the Word of God. You shall receive power. And Scripture is telling He increased the more in strength. Do you need more power? Do you feel you're running low on gas? You don't have enough strength? This is why it's so important to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. You will be speaking and saying things that other people will be confounded about. 23. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. So, wasn't that long before he got enough people upset at him by the, what he was talking about that now the Jews wanted to kill him. He was sent out to arrest and kill all the Christians. Now he turns out to be saved. Now he has stirred up the bees' nest. Now they're out after him. Verse 24. But their laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. They didn't care what time. They wanted to get him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to his disciples, but they were all afraid of him. Now, from what Saul has done, even though he's preaching Jesus, even though he's increased in power, the disciples themselves are still not sure. They were still afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple now. They didn't believe it quite yet. They heard, they were watching them. He's increasing the power. He wanted to stay with them because now the Jews were after him also. They're like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 not yet, no. 27, verse 27. But Barnabas took him. Okay, so Barnabas took him up and says, I see the fruit. Barnabas could see what happened. He witnessed it and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That is the most powerful name given unto men. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Verse 28. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. Verse 29, And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Now the Jews were after him, now he's got the Grecians after him. Okay, you got to see what's going on. He's preaching with such boldness, such authority. He's getting the world picked off. Verse 30, Which when the brethren knew... They brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. So they got him out of the region. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. They were multiplied. Okay. So once the truth is being spread. It says, Then had the churches rest. They were edified. Okay? Walking in the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is holy reverence. That's what that means. Okay? They did what they were told. They heard the Holy Spirit. They heard Jesus speak. They was put on their hearts. They just did it. And then they were multiplied. How many people in the body of Christ? We need to be multiplied. We need more numbers. We need the truth so the truth can set them free. Verse 31, 32. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt in Lydia. 33. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick with the palsy. Okay, or sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto them, unto him, Ananias, 
Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose. Boom! Scripture says immediately. Not in a couple hours. Not in a couple of days. Not in a month. And that is, the Lord Jesus Christ heals you. Get up. Make your bed. Walk. And immediately he stood up. <clears throat> 35. And all that dwelt at Lydia and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. You see, this is the authority and power through the Holy Spirit you were given at Shaw's, at Walmart, at the store, wherever you go. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up, walk. Hey, good morning. Doing a local Bible study. You're welcome to stay if you want. Oh, I wait, but I got, I got sap oil down making syrup. Oh, hey, God bless you. Thank you. Have a nice day. 35, and all that love your son and turn to the Lord. This is our heart of the Bible study. To have people's hearts turn to the Lord. 36, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and all deeds which she did. Full of good works. Don't even know the name of Jesus yet, but full of good works from her heart. Hallelujah. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died whom they had washed and they laid their hand, laid her in the upper chamber. 38. And forasmuch as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Two days. I mean, she's been dead for two days. And then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them, full of good works. Verse 40, But Peter put them all forth and knelt down and prayed. So Peter kicked him out of the room. So, Here's your loved one, dead on the bed. And the first thing he does was kick everybody out of the room. But he knelt down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Glory be to God. And verse 41, And he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. Glory be to God. I love scripture. I love digging into what the Bible says we can do. 42. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a tanner. Brothers and sisters, that is the very end, chapter 9. We'll continue in chapter 10. There is so much we can learn. The Bible says, not Pastor Dan says, not Jesus the Rock Church says, the Bible says, to baptize with the Holy Ghost and after that you shall receive power. We are reading about signs, miracles, and wonders chapter after chapter and now okay this lady died and in the name of Jesus get up and walk and she rose from the dead how much more power do we need why are we going from day to day in fear of other people all the widows were put out of the room. Rise, and boom, she rose, living, breathing, her eyes open. And then he opened the door and let all the widows in and presented her alive. What a beautiful picture. If you don't know Jesus Christ yet, if you are in sin,
sin. And you're the way of the world. So you're into sorcery. You're into witchcraft. You're dead. But in this picture, they have presented them alive. Do you want to come, become alive in the name of Jesus? Do you want to accept Jesus? Hallelujah. All you have to do is ask, Father, forgive me of my sins. Heal me of my sicknesses. Forgive me of living my life the way that I wanted to. I am sorry. Forgive me. Please enter my heart. Create me a new creation that I may live forever with you in the kingdom of heaven. That's all you got to do. From your heart, whatever words come out of your mouth, all you have to ask Jesus forgiveness. And when your heart is absolutely true to line up with the words you speak, boom, you will be saved, you will be filled with the Holy Ghost, that's all you got to do is ask. Until next time, we will pick up where we left off, God bless you. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Why? Because He is. Because He loves you. God bless. Peace. Until next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.